Alright, this is going to be the tutorial for those of you that um, want to use the, um, the paintbrush to uh, color, your, um, color, color your vector portraits. Um, it's up to you if you want to use the paintbrush. Um, I do recommend using this method over the vector method if you are having trouble um, coloring it using the, um, uh, you know, to, um, using the vectors. All right, and um, also if you do end up using the vectors, you can use this method to um, touch up the details in your drawing. So, uh, very first thing that we're gonna do, uh, even before we start uh, to do the coloring, uh, we just gotta double check if the paintbrush is working in your um, uh, in Illustrator. So I click on the paintbrush, and if you notice on my layers, so you know if I try to create a new layer, you know I can't really work my paintbrush. All right, so um, you know, just letting you know right now, Illustrator isn't really meant uh, isn't a program that's meant to be used to um, do coloring. Uh, but you know, for this particular project, though, I do want us to do colors with um, vectors or you know, just coloring with shapes. Um, so in order to get your brush to work, because um, in some cases the brush may not work on Illustrator, uh, the the way to get the work is uh, we're going to go to Windows and Brushes. Alright, so real important under your brush panel, you want to look for your brushes. So we're going to click on this tab over here on the top left. And we're going to click on Open Brush Library. Alright, it's also located here as well. Just click on that library. And I want you to click on Artistic and Artistic Calligraphy. Alright, when you click on that, then you're going to have a couple of brushes to choose from. So I'm just going to pick this round brush. Um, but just you know, be careful what brush you pick. I think these all work out pretty good, but um, you don't want to find those um, brushes that have um, that create differently. But I think these artistic calligraphy brushes work pretty well. I'm just gonna click this one right here, and you know now you have a brush to choose from. And also, if you go on the very top, uh, you know you have more control of that brush. So now when I color in with my brush, it's gonna work. All right, so. Alright, let me get this out of the way. I might actually want to keep that open because um, it's going to let me pick some different brushes. So now we can work on the coloring part of your um, project. You know, so just like what we've been working on so far, um, I do want to just keep the darks in my outline in the picture just because um, I don't really have straight out outlines. So, um, you know, just remember you're going to work on your grays next. So you're going to change that to grays. Or not gray, some gray shadows. Um, but I'm just gonna label it as gray, just so I know that's the gray areas that I'm working on. And real important on the grays, um, you know, put it below the darks and your outlines. And this is the part where you're gonna start to color in those gray areas. All right, so I'm gonna go to my windows, swatches. Oh, look, I got my swatches open somewhere. Okay, this is my swatches. I gotta, I gotta look for my colors again. So default, print, and so, you know, now I have my colors that I'm working with. I'm gonna work with my, um, you know, a darker gray. So I'm gonna pick that one. And, oops. Uh, make sure you stroke. Uh, whenever you use the paintbrush, the stroke is what's controlling it. So I'm gonna make, I'm gonna click none for this. My strokes in front. I'm gonna switch it to gray, and let me make the stroke a little bit bigger. You know, now when I color, it should, you know, color in that area that I need. Alright, so you're just going to color in those areas where you see gray. Alright, and do take your time with the coloring because, you know, once you color it, it's, it's the same exact thing as painting. You can't really erase it. Um, using the eraser doesn't really work that well, so I recommend not using the eraser. So, you know, every mark that you make, if you're not happy with the mark that you made, I would just undo it. So you're just going to have to use the undo as your eraser. Again, you know, this program isn't really meant to do painting, but, um, you know, there are some options to do painting. But uh, if you notice, though, uh, since I put the grays below my darks in the outline, it's going behind the, um, you know, behind those areas that I, uh, where my blacks are. So I'm just going to call in those gray areas. So, you know, this is pretty easy. I feel like this method's a little bit easier to use, but uh, you know, if you're real comfortable with using the 
um, the vectors. I do recommend using the vectors because uh, you're going to have a completely different look once you're done with your drawing as opposed to uh, using this method of coloring. All right, you know I do prefer more that more vector look, but um, it's up to you if you want to use this method as well. So I, I laid out my gray areas. Uh, I actually want to create a darker gray because if I click on that eyeball for my grays, oh, you know what? Hmm, interesting. Yeah, my gray area is one of my outline layer. So let's see how we're gonna fix that. Interesting. Hmm, what layer do my grays go in? Oh, where on my image? Okay. Yeah, I, I had this on the wrong layer, so let me highlight everything. So just remember, real important though, um, I need to fix this. Uh, you know, you want to make sure it's on the correct layer. I got too cut up in the drawing, so I'm going to just do um, Command X to cut up my image. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm just going to put this on the bottom, and I'm going to change this to image, and Command V to paste. So now my image is on this layer here. So I was wondering what happened to my picture. Definitely did change a little bit. So just line it up again. And I'm going to just change this to gray. So yeah, just, just real important, make sure you're working on the correct layer. So now i got my grays. And uh, you know, like I said before, I'm going to hide it. And I do want to work on some darker grays on top. So I'm going to click darker gray. And then the darker grays, uh, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. And this time we'll use the real darker gray on the that picture. And I'm just going to, oops, let me make this a little, a little bit bigger. Oh, it got real small. Okay, so I'm going to work on those darker gray areas. It's only some areas that's a little darker. For some reason my, yeah, it's still on that one point. But, you know, the nice thing about these computer programs that we're working with, um, you know, there's always going to be an easier way of accomplishing the assignment. Um, you know, to be quite honest, I always show you guys the harder way of doing things because, um, you know, in some cases you might have to end up doing it the harder way just because of how things work out. Uh, but, you know, there are easier ways of, you know, creating your... Um, drawings or coloring them. So, all right. So I'm gonna put the this gray back in. So I do gotta clean up some of these areas of my my picture, just because it looks a little messy. Uh, but we're gonna do that at the end. Uh, so, you know, you just keep working on the layers. The next layer would be obviously the 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 lighter grays. So I'll do light gray and. Uh, you know, just make sure it's on that layer. You, I would lock all your layers just so you don't mess with it. And you know, under the light gray, this is where I would put the, the light grays. All right, so you know, this is gonna be the easier way of coloring things. But you know, again, I, I recommend you stick with the uh, vectors if you're, you know, good with that. This is more of, um, you know, like a painterly way of doing it. Uh, you know, there's no right or wrong way of doing it. All right, so you know when I hide it, you know now I got more of like a painterly look in my my drawing. All right.